Over the years, we've often mentioned or touched on the subject of trickle-down technology in bike tech. Now, Shimano said to me, would I like to do a video on this? And I jumped at the chance because I've always used their components throughout my racing and also my general cycling career too. So, I had a good search around inside of my workshop and attic and I found some real life examples that I can explain to you what it's all about. The STI lever. Yeah, that's right. STI stands for Shimano Total Integration. Named so because of the integration of both gearing and braking within one lever itself. Now, the Dura Ace model was actually released way back in 1990 as an eight speed setup. Now, sadly, I never actually got to own a pair of those shifters myself. Instead, I've managed to find on an old relic of a bike of mine this, the Shimano 600 Old Tegra lever that was virtually identical in appearance. This was released in 1992. The only major difference to most people out there was this front plate here. That was just slightly different because it said 600 Altegra and not Dura Ace. Of course, there were some other differences with the materials and also the finish. Then in 1993 came the 105 SC Group set. And these were slightly different in appearance, I guess you could say, because the STI levers on that bike, they didn't have these rather cool face plates, which I liked back in the day. Instead, they had an Allen key in there instead, which made them easily identifiable. Now, you may well be wondering, where on earth is the left-hand shifter? Well, believe it or not, I never even used one. Instead, I just had a standard aero brake lever on there. The difference in feel, yeah, it was noticeable, but I kind of learned to live with it, really. But one of the reasons I did it was weight, because they were pretty heavy back in the day, these shifters. Uh, and also, when I was racing in the junior and under 16 categories, you didn't tend to change the front chainring that much because generally the racing was eyeballs out from start to finish and they weren't that long, so you just, well, accepted it. If you wanted to change gear, you'd go down to the uh, down tube there. But I remember these oh so fondly. It changed everything when it came to bike racing. Now, it took an amazing seven years for Shimano to release a new Dura Ace group set. So in 1997, I remember this one oh so fondly, right? I was working as a Saturday boy in a local bike shop and I remember seeing the 7700 group set for the very first time. And guess what? Got one here. Oh yes. A bit battered, a bit worn, and this one was even on the, the bike of a pretty famous bike rider too. Now. The levers took a really different approach. Instead of that round faceplate on them, they went angular. They went sort of modern cutting edge, if you like. But also, it went from eight speed to nine speed too. Uh, and this really transformed the shifting, in my opinion, because it made it ever so more positive. The clicks were just, there was something really, really impressive about it. I can't quite put my finger on it, but just harking back to it, I was so chuffed to actually get hold of a bike with this on myself. Something else that they actually introduced around that time too was the Octolink bottom bracket. So that came with a 7700 group set. Now Octolink, obviously, there's got to be an eight involved in there somewhere because of Octa. So we've got eight little splines here on the actual enlarged uh, bottom bracket spindle here built inside of the cartridge unit. They matched up with this inside of this chain set. So it simply slotted on and this saw the end of the square taper bottom bracket, if you like, when it came to the Dura Ace range. Then, uh, a year later, the 6500 Ultegra range came out with all the shared technologies. And then one year after that, in 99, came the 1055 group set. And then lastly, Tiagra followed suit in 2001 with the 4400 group set. Now I've got a few of these bits on various bikes, so you're gonna be showing them on screen. And I'm just glad I never threw anything away. I tend not to th ever throw anything away because I think oh, that could be useful one day, and well, today it has. Despite what my other half says, she always tells me to clear out that shed. No, 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 you lot love this. Right, we're gonna carry on the journey then because I absolutely love a trip down memory lane. 2004, Shimano released the 7800 Dura Ace Group Set, an instant hit, and funnily enough, Here's one I've got down here. I don't know what happened to the brakes. I've got some old 7700 ones on here, but the levers, right, we went 10 speed. We went sleek, we went a little bit more rounded, I guess, than that previous 7700 group set. But this one was an instant hit with bike riders. But why exactly? Well, 
this chain set. Oh yeah, this one, it tended to just really catch the eye because there was nothing like it out there. The chain rings were all filled in. They looked oh so cool. And they were then fitted onto a new bottom bracket standard. That's right, a new one, the Holotech 2. There was never a Holotech 1, bizarrely, but the Holotech 2 was done for a very good reason. So the Holotech 2 bottom bracket then, what was so different about that from the Octolink? Well, firstly, the actual bearings of the bottom bracket were outboard from the frame. So they screwed onto the cups rather than inside of them, if that makes sense. Now, a couple of reasons why they did this. Uh, firstly, it allowed a better weight distribution and also a more stable platform for the axle or torque shaft, if you like, of the chain set. Now, speaking about that axle of the bottom bracket, well, it was gone from the actual bottom bracket. Instead, it was integrated into the right-hand crank and then the left-hand crank attached onto it on the other side. This made things way lighter and way cooler, I reckon, too. There was nothing else like it on the market at the time. Of course, that Holotech 2 bottom bracket system, it wasn't all about looks. I remember the pros really liking it. And the reason being the integrated axle, which was enlarged to 24 millimeters, allowed great power transfer. Now all of this technology, that was trickled down to the 6600 group set in 2005, and then the 105 one in 2006, and Ontegra got the full 10 speed and also Holotech 2 treatment in 2011. 2008, that was a big year. Why though? Well, the Dura Ace 7900 group set was released. So what went? Those external gear cables, instead, they got rooted underneath the handlebar tape. It instantly cleaned up the sleek, smooth appearance of the front end of the bike. 2009, Ultegra got the treatment. 2010, 105. And then in 2015, Tiagra got the internal ones, but there was still a 10-speed group set. In 2009, it came this the 7970 group set. What was that though? Well, it wasn't a complete group set per se. Instead, it was the shifters and the mechs, and also some of the cables too, because we had electronic gearing introduced. It's quite shocking really to believe it's only been out 10 years. Yeah, and then two years later, of course, in 2011, came the old Tegra range with the 6770, and as to this date, it's not passed down beneath the old Tegra tiering of group set. 2012. That was a good year, the London Olympics. I remember that one very, very well. But of course, Shimano, they introduced 11 speed componentry to the 9000 series group sets of the Dura Ace versions. So of course we had mechanical as well as DI2. 2013, Ultegra, that got 11 speed. 2014, Ultegra got 11 speed DI2. And also 105, that went 11 speed. Of course, just in the mechanical version. We then find ourselves at the modern day Jura Ace group sets, the 9100 versions, if you like. Now these ones, they had again a redesign and also incorporated uh, disc brakes into the actual range for the first time. Before they were kind of standalone product that were brought in when needed, if that makes sense. Now, something that was very, very different was the rear derailleur. The Shadow RD system came in. Now this actually, believe it or not, was borrowed or taken from our mountain bike loving friends because they were actually using this way back in 2007. So nine years later, we got it. What does it mean though? Well, instead of having the big bolt which bolted it onto your rear dropout, instead, it was a more slimmed down affair and it meant that the actual rear derailleur could go inwards by over 10 millimeters. Slightly more aero, but also there's a link in there that you can remove and then directly attach it onto a special derailleur hanger, meaning slightly improved and crispier gear shifts, if you like. I like that. So Ultegra, that got all of this tech trickled down into its 8000 series group set in 2017. 105, a year later in 2018, that got it in its 7000 series group sets. Now, Little nugget of information here, because I'm sure some of you are thinking, what about the other group sets? Well, in 2017, the Claris group set, which is kind of an entry level one, that got internal cables and got the Holotech 2 bottom bracket also. Meaning that yeah, trickle down technology really does happen. Plus, if all of this trickle down tech hasn't tickled your fancy, what about this then? 
In the past couple of years, I guess you could say that Shimano has cross-pollinated, if you like, because they've brought over even more mountain bike tech to us drop bar lovers. So first up, we had the RX800 series of rear derailleurs. And then came the GRX series group sets. They incorporated things such as a single chain ring, if you like, and also Shadow RD+. But what is that? So the Shadow RD Plus then is a development of the previous model, the Shadow RD, in that it actually helps to provide a stabilization platform for your chain when riding over rough terrain. So with the flick of a lever or a little switch, you can actually almost lock the rear derailleur cage in place, meaning that the chain is less likely to bounce around and dislodge when riding over that rough off-road that some of us love to ride on. Now, Ollie actually did some GCN Tech Does Science all about this last year, so if you really want to see all about it, head on over there. Not, of course, until the end of this video. But then, if all this tech does eventually get trickled down, why would you go out and get a high-end group set instantly? After all, some of you could well remember when Cy and Ollie were blindfolded and they tried to tell the difference between 105 and Durace, it wasn't necessarily that straightforward. Well, there's a couple of things. Firstly, the quality of the materials being used, and then that plays into the next part, which is the weight of the components. Essentially, that is what makes up the big differences, in my opinion, with these group sets. And I reckon that tech is passed down across all different industries out there because you do tend to see it happening. I guess from the consumer's point of view, you really have to weigh up this. Patience and also the desire. So if you've been patient enough for it to pass on down and also the desire to have that top end, really lightweight group set. Ultimately, we're all gonna get our grubby little hands on it though at the end of the day. There we are. I hope you've actually enjoyed this trip down memory lane and also the way I've tried to explain the trickle down tech and how it does happen because it's a question we get asked over and over. If you've liked this video, remember to give it a big old thumbs up, share it with your mates too. And don't forget to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. And also remember to subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell so you get alerted each and every time we put a video live. And now for two more cracking videos. How about clicking just down here and just down here. Now I'm going to decide which one of these old beauties to take out for a spin. Let me know in the comments which one.